The first step to installing OPOS drivers is to go to the manufacturer's website and download the drivers. These are different than Windows drivers. These are special drivers designed for point-of-sale systems. Driver installation can vary greatly from manufacturer to manufacturer. In this example, I'll be installing Epson drivers in a cache drawer connected to that printer. For this lesson, I've already downloaded the drivers onto the desktop. Leave the setting at No Registry File. Leave the default setting in Developer. Select the port type you'll be using. You can also uncheck port types you won't be using. Please note that after the status bar completes, there can be a long delay as the Epson utility continues to install in the background. Uncheck Display Release Notes. After the driver has completely installed, it will launch the utility so you can configure your printer. I'm also going to close the installation directory we used. If needed, you can rerun this utility by going to the Windows Start menu, OPOS, and select Setup. Click the plus sign next to Devices to show the devices that can be installed. First, we want to install the printer, so click POS Printer. Then click the Add icon. Select your printer model from the drop-down. If using a USB printer and it's already plugged in, it will normally show up in the list. If the port is not listed, then you need to click the Make Port button. From here, you can select the port type, and depending on the port type selected, other choices will be displayed. These can include baud rate, port number, stop bits, it depends on the port. To verify the installation, click Check Health Interactive. Click Start to test the printer. It will only print a quarter inch of paper. You will also see a confirmation message saying that printer checked out OK. If your message indicates a failure, you probably selected the wrong port, baud rate, or another setting. A plus sign has been added to the POS printer and you can now view the printer installed. Now we'll add the cache drawer. So we click cache drawer and then add device. The Epson does support multiple cache drawers, but the most common setup is a standard single drawer. The cache drawer is connected to the printer. Here, you're selecting which type of printer it's connected to, one with a standard RS-232 port, parallel, USB, etc. Here, we're selecting the model of printer it's connected to. Again, you have the option to check the device. On this screen, just keep the defaults. If you ever need to check the device after it's been installed, click this icon. Before doing a device check, you should exit CounterPoint, otherwise both programs may be trying to control the printer. If after installation you realize you need to make adjustments to the device settings, click this icon. Here you have the option to change your baud rate, port number, parity, again depends on the port you're installing. 
you can also view other devices not manufactured by Epson. You can't test them, but you can view them. Here you see magnetic card readers from ID Tech. We can now exit the installation program. If you ever need to run the utility again, go to the Start menu under OPOS and run Setup POS. We now need to configure the CounterPoint workstation. If updating from 839 or if you have not used the new device framework, you first need to set your store to use the new device framework. Select the store you want to configure. Then uncheck the Use Legacy Device Framework. If checked, you won't be using the OPOS drivers. Uncheck the box to use OPOS. Now you can save and exit the screen. We can now start configuring CounterPoint to use OPOS drivers. When configuring the drivers, you should be at the workstation with those devices. We'll first configure CounterPoint so it knows which station and cache drawer to use on each computer. So first, we go to Setup, System, Workstations. The Server field will already be filled in. You can click Get Machine Name to auto-fill in your computer name. Then press Tab to advance to the Description field. Enter any description you want, it makes no difference, this is for reference only. Then select the work group. Then select the default station and default drawer. Save the changes. Next we go to Setup point-of-sale devices. Select the computer we want to configure the devices for. It's easy to spot. It will have current in parentheses next to it. After selecting the computer, add device. First, we'll add the point-of-sale printer. If your printer is listed, select it from the list. If not, then select Other OPOS Receipt Printer. Now we'll add the cash drawer. Again, if it's in the list, select it. If not, select Other OPOS Cash Drawer. To finalize the configuration, select the computer. Click the plus sign next to the computer you're configuring to show all the devices. Then we'll select the printer. Click the three dot icon next to the OPOS name. Select the specific printer you need to install. You can also at this point add a logo for the header and footer of the receipt. You can test your counterpoint configuration by clicking Advanced Test. Click Print Test. A small chit should print from the printer. You can then exit this window. Now we'll configure the cache drawer. After selecting the OPOS cache drawer, click the three dot icon next to the OPOS name. Select the proper configuration. Again, you can test the device. In this case, since the cache drawer is connected to the printer, you first need to click Enable, then click Open. Now click Save and Close to save the configuration and close this window. CounterPoint will now load all the devices. If there's a problem detected, you will be prompted. You will need to repeat this step for each workstation you're adding devices to. If you have just upgraded from 839 or have not been using the new OPOS forms, you will need to change your form groups to reflect this. 
If using receipt printers, you will need to reconfigure your forms and change from Crystal Reports or XML receipts to the new OPAS. If you're simply adding a new workstation to an existing setup, you can skip this. Any forms based on the receipt printer will need to be changed to utilize the new framework. The other forms can be skipped. After selecting the proper form, click the Forms tab. The file extension will inform you to which type of form this is. RPT is a Crystal form, XML is an XLM form, and RDLC is an OPAS form. To change the form type, first click the form. After selecting the current form, you can now change the form by clicking Form File Name. Counterpoint ships with forms for each type. So if you have not renamed any of the files, just select the same name with the new extension RDLC. Some form groups have more than one form on it. Any form that prints to a receipt printer, change to RDLC type. Then, go to the next form group. Repeat the process for any forms printing to a receipt printer. You don't need to make any changes to forms that print to a laser or an inkjet printer. Counterpoint comes with a form editor if you want to edit any of the OPAS forms. Form editing goes beyond the scope of this video and won't be covered here. You have available three printer methods. Default to print to the default OPAS printer. Preview to preview on screen, which you can then print. Or email to email the receipt. After making your changes, you can exit this screen. Installation and configuration is now complete.